Today, we will be ranking every new Pokemon from the Teal Mask DLC in terms of Little Cup viability. There was one mod in particular that just completely shocked me, and I've seen almost no one using it. Anyways, I'm just gonna hop straight into it, so let's go. I'm not going to be spending much time on these, as I mean, why would I? You'll probably not see much of these mons, honestly, and they're not useful, like, in the slightest. Number 35, Sawaddle. The award for the worst Pokemon added goes to, well, Sawaddle. I mean, like, just look at it. Garbage stats, mid move pool, let's move on. Number 34, Sentret. Next up in the useless category is Sentret, with some cool moves like Tidy Up, U-Turn, Knock Off, Focus Punch, and plenty of coverage with the elemental punches. But its stats are, what a shock, unusable as well. I mean, doesn't Sentret at least look sorta of fast? I always thought it did, but it has base 20 speed, which is garbage even by LC standards. Useless. Number 33, Puchina. Next up is Puchina, who I can best describe as just mischief, but worse in every way. Worse ability, worse stats, worse move pool. Sad, really, but not surprising at all. Number 32, Grubbin. Grubbin has a surprisingly okay move pool, but a not great ability and bad typings plus stat distribution makes it garbage. Can't say I'm sad to say that though, like this guy's design is just boring. Number 31, Cleffa. Cleffa just has, who would have guessed, trash stats. Plus, Cleffa's ability Magic Guard, a large part of what makes Clefable its final evolution good, is a lot less impactful than LC, as Toxic isn't very common, and Stealthy Walks and Spike just aren't as important. It's not good, don't bother using it. Number 30, CDOT. The last mon in the useless category, CDOT has no even halfway decent stats, and its ability, Chlorophyll, which doubles its speed under sun, is better used by many other mons. Not to mention a subpar move pool, CDOT, yeah, it's not it. Anyways, now with those dime a dozen 200 base stat total mons out of the way, we can get to the, well, not useless on a technicality mons. What fun. Technically usable mons. These are the usable mons in the DLC. You could use these, but each of these are outclassed by other mons. Like why use Camera Opt when Primal Groudon exists? Number 29, Feebas. Feebas is a cool set recommended to me by a viewer, Thomas underscore left. Max Spadef, max speed range setter with a light screen. With 18 speed it can usually outspeed the opponent and get up rain, then it can set up one screen and typically die due to low bulk. It's certainly cool, but there's just better rain setters, like Hasuian Voltorb, who is one of the best mons in the format anyways, or Shrudel with Prankster and Parting Shot and Encore. Feebas isn't a bad mon, it's just outclassed, and it's a bit of a one-trick pony, or fish in this case. Number 28, Lotad. One of the worst possible rain sweepers, but it's a rain sweeper nevertheless. It actually has Swords Dance, one of the best boosting moves in the game, and a boosting move that no other rain sweeper gets, but it's not really enough to make it good. Buizel, a actually good rain sweeper, has bulk up, better overall stats, two great physical water type moves that aren't Terra Blast. Oh yeah, did I mention? Lotad doesn't even have a physical water type move, like it it has to run Terra Blast. And Buizel has plenty of good coverage as well. Hell, like even Aracuda, aka just worse Buizel, is miles better than Lotad. Lotad's just outclassed in so many ways. Number 27, Spinarak. Spinarak is interesting for sure, it has an okay attack stat with base 60, and a cool move pool with knockoff, sucker punch, toxic spikes, and shadow sneak. I could maybe see it being used as a suicide toxic spikes lead, but just use Glimlet at that point. Cool utility moves, but bad stats and outclassed. Anyways, on to the next category, the still admittedly bad mons. These mons are just bad, but not like garbage. Like you could use these, and they might not even be dead weight but they're usually outclassed still, or just not great. Number 26, Hoot Hoot. So coming in as the first mon in the bad mon category, Hoot Hoot's a pretty interesting Pokemon. It gets Nasty Plot and has the ability Tinted Lens, which is one of the best abilities in the game. It makes it so that resisted attacks deal double damage, so they end up doing normal damage. The only problem is that the garbage stats on Hoot Hoot are, well, garbage. If you ever got the opportunity to set up, you could maybe do something, but that base 14 speed isn't helping, like you're not gonna outspeed a thing. Number 25, Phantom. 
Phantom just feels like it's so close to being good, but the wheels always fall off whenever it's supposed to be great. It has Harvest, Leech Seed, Will-O-Wisp, and decent enough stats. I just feel like it always gets knocked off one turn too early. Maybe I'm just using it wrong, I'm really not sure about this one. Number 24, Litwick. Litwick is a pretty good special attacker, and actually has decent enough defensive stats along with getting Will-O-Wisp. My only problem is just the lack of reliable recovery. If you wanted to use a more offensive ghost type, just run Hisui and Zoroark or Driftland. Like it's not bad, it's just outclassed by those two. Number 23, Ducklet. So like, okay, this one just makes me sad. Like I love this little guy's design, and I just want to give him a big hug. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Wingle exists. Despite Wingle having actually like worse overall stats, that move pool is just better. Not to mention, although Wingle has worse stats, they're actually technically better because they're split up like more efficiently. The only real thing Ducklet has is Defog, but Defog isn't even that good this generation in my opinion. Number 22, Duskull. Yet another just not great ghost type. Simply put, it's worse than Drifloon and Hisuian Zoroark, much like Litwick. Although it has very good defensive stats, lack of reliable recovery just hinders it greatly. It's not very good, I wouldn't recommend it. Number 21, Chingling. Chingling has access to Calm Mind, Recover, Stored Power, and Dazzling Gleam. It actually has all right stats, and it also gets the ability to Levitate, which makes it immune to ground moves. That isn't great on its own, but when you combine Levitate with Terra Steel, for example, it can actually get pretty good. My only problem with Chingling is its low speed. I just feel like even if it can boost up and maybe take out one Mon, the opponent can just switch in another one and knock it out before it gets to attack again. Number 20, Poliwag. So, Poliwag has access to Belly Drum, the best setup move in the game if used correctly. It also has 19 speed, so it's going to outspeed almost everything. My only issue is its bad attack stat, like even if you want to run plus attack and run only 18 speed, you still only hit 15 attack and that's not really good enough all the time. But this mod can work. It just lacks consistency. Number 19, Swinub. Swinub has alright stats. It's not great, but they're actually not atrocious. Its strengths lie in its move pool. It has access to Earthquake, Ice Shard, Ice Skull Crash or Spear, and Stealth Rocks. It's honestly a solid lead with Rocks and then just Ice Shard, and all in all, although its stats aren't bad, they still aren't good enough. Being an Ice type sucks in general, and it's heavily outclassed, even as a hazard lead, by Sanchu Alola, a mon that I'll be looking at later in this video. Alrighty then, onto the okay mons. These mons are just, well, okay. Like, you could use them, and you wouldn't be sacrificing too much, but usually there's still better options. Although, these mons probably have something unique to them that makes them... okay. Number 18, Ekans. Ekans has Intimidate, a solid ability, and Coil, a great stat boosting move. With the accuracy raises of Coil, you can also run Gunk Shot without having to worry about missing. Although it does have Trailblaze to boost its speed, I found it's better to just run a slow bulky set and invest EVs into your defense instead. You can even replace Intimidate with Shed Skin and run Rest if you like. Or you can just flip the script entirely and just run a support set with Glare instead. Either way, Ekans is a pretty unique and actually decent mon. Number 17, Geodude. So Geodude has unreal defense and surprisingly solid attack as well. Its typing isn't great, but as a stealth rock lead, it's solid enough. It also has the ability Sturdy, which means if it's at max HP, it can't be one-hit KO'd. Geodude is alright, but I mean, it's not great. Like, outclassed by Glimlet as a lead, with no recovery and relatively weak special defense, it's not great as a wall either. Like, it's not a garbage mon, and you certainly can find use with it though. Number 16, Chimchar. So Chimchar has what I can best describe as just like a fun moveset. It has U-turn to pivot around, knock off for utility, flare blitz to do big damage, especially if it's boosted by its ability, Blaze, which boosts fire type moves by 1.5 times if the Mon is on one third or lower health, and surprisingly enough, it also gets slack off in case everyone wants to run recovery. Chimchar isn't amazing, but I feel like it's just good enough at what it does to be useful at times. Number 15, Jangmo O. Jangmo O has, in my opinion, one good set. It has Swords Dance, Loaded Dice, Scale Shot. This set, although admittedly great, has one glaring issue. Aksu is just better at doing that. If we ignored Aksu, Jangmo O would be a pretty solid option though. Number 14, Nose Pass. Nose Pass's defense puts Geodude to shame with the highest defense stat in the tier, 135. Combine that with Iron Defense to boost your defense even higher, 
and Terra Fighting and Body Press, a fighting type attack that uses defense instead of attack and damage calculations, and nothing will want to take that. The only problem is Ghost types, as they're immune to Body Press, and Nosepass's best option to hit them is Stone Edge. But you probably don't want to invest much into attack as it's all going into its bulk. Super fun mon, if not quite inconsistent. Number 13, Bellsprout? Bellsprout is in my opinion a sleeper pick for Sun Teams. Not that it's like amazing, but if your opponent doesn't take it seriously, then it can do some work. Using Chlorophyll, it can double its speed and hit 26 on most sets. It can get up to 17 special attack and it can double it in one turn with growth, should it like. For attacking options, you have Terrifier Weather Ball, Sludge Bomb, and Solar Blade. I'd suggest Life Orb, but you could rock Violite if you're really committed to setting up one growth. Definitely a sleeper pick, and pretty solid. Number 12, Piplup. Piplup, in addition to being just a cute little guy, has some nice moves. Flip Turn and Roost, both of which I believe it got this gen, make it a great support mon, especially Flip Turn with its low speed, it can just eat a hit, then switch on to whichever Pokemon you like. Its stats are solid enough, and I'm just so happy this Pokemon is usable, if not great. It's certainly solid enough, and you can use this as a nice pivot with decent offense as well. With its base 61 special attack and Hydro Pump and Ice Beam, it can actually dish out solid enough damage. Number 11, Geodude Alola. Geodude Alola is surprisingly different to Geodude. If you just want a hazard lead, use regular Geodude. But for a suicide lead, use Geodude Alola. With its ability galvanized, normal type moves become electric and gain 1.2 times power. Combine that with explosion and 18 attack and you'll be slamming opponents while also gaining a free switch into whatever mon you like. I love this set in mon, but it's admittedly not amazing. For one, ground types are immune to electric moves and can hit Geodude Alola super effectively. Geodude Alola has no real way to hit ground types and loses pretty badly to them. But if you're running a hyper offense team and want a suicide lead, not only is this mod fun, but it's pretty solid as well. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Up next is the good mons. These mons are good options that will be usable on plenty of teams, but maybe not every team. They can be amazing options in certain situations, however. Number 10, Grottle. Grottle just got access to Shell Smash this gen, and is now a solid Shell Smash sweeper. It just boosts up and goes straight for the sweep. Its only problem is that Shelder is just a better Shell Smash Sweeper, so most of the time you just use Shelder. But Goddle's a solid enough choice. Number 9, Slugma. Okay, like, to be honest, I thought Slugma would just be some random trash mon coming into this. But game after game, every single time, he just provided utility. I was shocked! All Slugma is good for is Slugma Nuts jokes, right? Wrong! Stealth Rog provides great utility, and Slugma is pretty bulky. With that base 70 special attack, it also has a solid offensive presence, along with a good defense. With Flame Body, it can maybe burn stuff 30% of the time when taking hits, Earth Power smokes anything weak to ground, and Lava Plume does solid stab damage while also having a 30% burn chance. Seriously, this is my number one shock in testing. Slugma is an underrated gem, and if you want to make a Slugma Nuts joke, you can. Win-win. Number 8, Munchlax. So Munchlax's best set this gen is just Curse Rest Talk. Munchlax has ridiculous stats for LC, and using Curse can become really hard to KO. Assuming it doesn't get crit, it can set up and sweep teams, although it can get knocked off, or if hit by a strong enough move before it boosts, it can also get KO'd. So it's not the best, but it's still pretty good. Number 7, Corfish. So Corfish has one main tool, Adaptability. It makes its same type attacks do double damage instead of 1.5 times like usual. Combine this with its pretty good stats, Dragon Dance to set up, and Aqua Jet for priority, and this mon is a threat and a half. It does need Terra to not lose to Grookey and Voltorb though, so that's a pretty large flaw. Number 6, Sandshrew. Okay, Sandshrew is my favorite Little Cup mon, and it's got one great niche, Sand Teams. Using Sandstorm, it can double its admittedly low speed stat, and with its great defensive stats, it can get at least one Swords Dance off. Then, with Terra Bug, it can use Leech Life to heal up, while also destroying the Grass types that resist its other main attack, Earthquake. This mod is fun and just great on Sand Teams, but that's the problem. It has to be used on Sand, which is pretty niche and probably the worst weather type this gen. If Sand was good, or if I had like any other sweepers to go along with Sandshrew, Sandshrew would be crazy. 
but as the only good Sandmon, it's still good, but it's not like amazing. So now we're on to the top 5 best mons, in my opinion, from the DLC. These mons can go into pretty much any team, well, except for one of them, and will be great options pretty much no matter what. Number 5, Alolan Sanchu. Alolan Sanchu has great stats that are min-maxed very well. It has a great move pool including perfect coverage, except against Snom and Surskit, the massive meta threats, with only two moves, Icicle Spear and Earthquake. It can use a Violet to set up multiple Swords Dances with Terra Ghost or Ground, or use Loaded Dice to make Icicle Spear always hit 4-5 to five times. It also has the ability Slush Rush, which means its speed is doubled under Snow, which just means you have to use Snover, a perfectly good mon. This mon can just sweep whole teams with a turn or two of setup and has the bulk to do so with 90 defense. This mon single-handedly made Snow a solid archetype. Number 4, Coughing. So, Coughing is an excellent physical wall with base 95 defense. It has Will-O-Wisp to further cripple physical attackers, Pain Split for okay-ish recovery. Like, Pain Split isn't great, but Coughing's bulky enough and has good enough offense that doesn't really need to stick around for too long. Coughing's biggest trait though, in my opinion, is its ability. Neutralizing Gas makes it so that the opposing Pokemon's ability is nullified. So many Pokemon in LC have abilities that make them good, like Regenerator Mons like Mianfu or Marini, Grassy Surge Grookey, Technician Meowth, like the list can just go on and on. The best part, in my opinion, is that Neutralizing Gas prevents Coughing from being trapped by Gothita, which would have been an otherwise large problem, as Coughing is a specially frail poison type. All in all, Coughing can just go into pretty much any team and is an all around great Mon. Number 3, Timber. Now, this might be a little controversial, but I think Timber is pretty crazy. This mod's quite bulky and it just hits like a truck. It can heal with Drain Punch and Knock Off provides nice utility, but the best part is Mock Punch. Boosted by its ability, Iron Fist, Mock Punch is just crazy. It can stop so many sweepers and just generally revenge kill or finish off a low HP mon. Mock Punch is just such a good option, I seriously cannot overstate how good it is. Now, these last three mons have been great, outstanding mons, but honestly, they don't hold a candle to number one and number two. These two mons, in my opinion, should be on every single team. They're versatile, frankly, a bit overpowered, and just completely define the meta. I think the placement of these two might be a little bit controversial, but here we go. Number two, Mianfu. So, Mianfu is only number two. Before any of you try to kill me in the comments, just let me explain myself first, okay? Mianfu is a great mon, but it only really has one good set, and I say that with large air quotes as the other ones are good, just not nearly as good. Its best set is without a doubt, the Fast Pivot set. This set is the face of LC. Fake for priority, knock off to get rid of a Violite, high jump kick for solid damage, and U-turn to pivot out and regain health with its ability, Regenerator. Now this set has it all, utility, priority, strong power, it's pretty insane. Its ability Regenerator heals it one third of its health every time it switches out, so Mianfu even has good healing. This mod doesn't really have, have like any flaws, but I'd say the next mod just slightly edges it out. Number one, Volibee. Yes, it's that fucking bird that I hate. That Volibee that I hate. seriously is OP. What makes it good isn't just its nasty plot stat that can sweep teams with relative ease, or its physical attacker set with stab knockoff. It's that it has both. Going into a match, you can try to guess which set it'll be, but it's hard to know for sure. And if you guess wrong, you could potentially just lose the game right there. But my biggest problem with Volibee is Weak Armor. This ability that lowers its defense by 1 and gives it double speed when hit with a physical attack is a great ability, but the problem is it just makes it scary to click any physical moves. Mianfu Fake Out, U-Turn, Knock Off, these are all just setup opportunities for Volibee. Just the simple threat of Volibee switching in and doubling its speed scares me to my core, and makes me not want to click anything that it could use to activate weak armor. Having to always play around it makes the game so much more tedious and stressful, and it just makes Volibee so good. And as I already mentioned, both of its meta sets are pretty crazy in their own right, regardless. So yeah, that's my ranking for all the DLC mons in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I hope this list doesn't offend any Mianfu supremacists or, I don't know, Suwaddle fans. If you liked the video, consider subscribing, I've put lots of time into this video, and as a result, my videos might start coming out a bit less frequently. I was really sick this week with a bit of a nasty cough, so if my voice sounded bad, that's why. However, I also tinkered with my mic so it sounds better. 
this is how it sounded before, and this is how it sounds now. So thank you guys, and I will catch you in my next video. Peace. Uh, the only other thing is I just want to thank you guys, because whenever I'm playing on the LC ladder, like, seriously, it's probably like one in three games, I bump into somebody and they're like, hey, are you Lemon LC? And I'm like, yeah, totally. And it's super awesome just to get to talk with all these nice people, and it really makes my day every time. So thank you guys, and just, like, keep playing LC.